Hello, and welcome to another edition of Just Five Minutes in Acts, short five-minute studies based on the New Testament book called The Acts of the Apostles. I'm Clay Brown, Associate Pastor for Equipping Ministry at Memorial Drive Presbyterian Church, Houston, Texas. And in today's passage, we're going to take one thought and then one implication of that thought. And by implication, I simply mean if the thought makes sense, then here's what it can mean in your life and mine. Today's passage, it's different. This is the special Christmas edition of Just Five Minutes in Acts. I'm wearing my red and green tie. It's my Scottish clan tie. I'm a Farguson by heritage. Notice I said Scottish clan and not any other kind of clan out there. And so it's, this is a different passage than we usually see. It's not from Acts, but from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Hear it from the New Living Translation. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Well, what's one thought from our passage? One comes immediately to mind, the contrast between light and darkness. You really notice it on certain occasions, don't you? Maybe a hotel room, or you're staying at a friend's house in an extra bedroom, and then the call of nature awakens you at three in the morning. So you get up, and you're hoping you don't stub your toe on something. If things go from bad to worse, then like at a friend's house, you're opening, trying to find the door to the hallway and go down the dark hall. If you're at a hotel and you go out the door into the hallway, you're in trouble. Wear a robe. Take your key. But anyway, you inch your way along and then it happens. Your toe catches the chair by the desk or the leg on the foot of the bed or somebody's shoe. It hurts. Well, you see, darkness is quite powerful. It can place many obstacles in your path. Uh, but darkness is also quite weak from another very important perspective. Just a little bit of light overcomes the darkness so that you can make your way forward and see where to go next. Light is the death knell for darkness. Most cell phones these days have a flashlight app, and you can turn the intensity down so that it's not on searchlight from helicopter intensity and you can see where to go without waking everyone else up. Darkness is strong, but light is far stronger. When it comes to a showdown between light and darkness, light wins hands down. All right, well, what's one implication of this thought for us? Through Jesus Christ, we have more than just a little light. We have a whole lot of light, uh, more than enough light not only to dispel the darkness, but to defeat it, dominate it, destroy it. We often see light and darkness in terms of good and evil, and good and evil we see a lot of, especially evil. We have terrorism, injustices of all kinds, political corruption, cynicism. You look at the news on TV or laptop and you see murder, theft, adultery, dishonesty, hatred, greed, plus a lot more every day. Uh, we also have the words we say and don't say, the attitudes we convey without a word. Yet we must not blind ourselves to the good happening all around us. Good battles against evil, left and right, up and down, backwards and forwards, in big ways, through movements and armies, organizations and governments, first responders and deeply committed people, and in small ways too, the kindness of a neighbor the encouragement from a friend. There is evil in the world, scads of evil, but there's also good in the world, scads of good. Evil's fatal flaw, it doesn't create anything. It, it's a parasite. It can only live by twisting what's good and by sucking the life out of something else. But good, good is what creates, what sustains, what gives joy and meaning and purpose. Good wins in the long run. Why? Because Jesus is Lord. Because the babe in the manger is the Son of God. He is the light. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness can never extinguish it. Never. Well, I think that's enough for now. 
Uh, any questions or comments, email me at cbrown at mdpc.org. That's cbrown at mdpc.org. Next time, after a two-week holiday break, we'll have one thought and one implication from Acts chapter 7. Please subscribe to these studies. Pass them along to your friends and neighbors. Well, thank you. God bless. Take care.